Well, Australia's MacArthur Coal is now entering talks with Peabody Energy after the U.S. miner improved its bid to $3.8 billion. Peabody raised its offer by 14 percent yesterday, trumping a sweetened offer from New Hope. POSCO and ArcelorMittal, two of MacArthur's major shareholders, have given support to Peabody's revised offer. MacArthur is also delaying a shareholder meeting scheduled for Monday to vote on taking over Gloucester. A condition of Peabody's offer is that MacArthur abandons the Gloucester deal and do take a look at how shares of the hotly pursued MacArthur Coal faring at this moment over in Sydney trade. In fact, it was one of the hotly traded stocks today. Uh, uh, Macquarie down, actually 5.8 percent, and uh, uh, let's see, MacArthur boards up now. Yes, MacArthur Coal certainly enjoying a pop of more than 8 percent, as you can see there. New Hope slightly lower, Gloucester Coal uh, currently flat. And let's get more light on the situation with Jonathan Barra, Managing Director at Commodity Broking Services, and joining us from our Sydney studios. Jonathan, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, why do you think we have this slight uh, shift of position from the two major shareholders, POSCO and ArcelorMittal? Does it make sense to accept the sweetened offer from Peabody, given that they got into MacArthur at about mm. $20 per share two years ago, and they have been very firm that they are long-term strategic investors? Mm. Uh, look, I think it makes sense at the moment because it's becoming a very complicated takeover with a lot of other parties that it makes sense just to sit on the sideline and see exactly what happens. The sweetened offer in my mind suggests that there's perhaps a little bit more in the tank there and that perhaps someone will sort of pay up a little bit more. So I feel it's more strategic to hold back, not to accept. Remember, MacArthur does offer an extremely clean and extremely good product, so I think there are more people in the wings just looking around. Um, Jonathan, I, I was just curious as to why it is that there is all this interest surrounding Peabody, and correct me if I'm wrong, but mm. it's, it's due to uh, them being the largest exporter of, of PCI, which is a, a, another form of, yep. of, of a cleaner type of coal, I guess, than the traditional coking coal. Uh, is this the way that the industry mm. is moving? Is it, is it kind of also uh, underscoring the shift that's happening mm. into this cleaner type of technology? It is cleaner, cleaner types of technology is something which the market's been focused off on and there's been a lot of capital which has been thrown into it. I think what we're finding is a lot of the larger resource companies are positioning themselves for cleaner fuel and also positioning themselves for when we actually start to really move out of this recession. And, and it makes sense to do that when we're still um, about to break out or we're seeing good economic numbers come through. So it's a position in play, and that's why a lot of these companies, particularly the coal sector here, is always in M&A activity at the moment. How much further upside do you anticipate there to be in the sector? And, and also, especially if you look at some of these stocks that have received pops up uh, on mm. the back of speculation that we could be looking at more of this, uh, these types of, of M&A activities happening. Yeah, Louise, it's a, it's a very hard question to answer that one because you don't, you really have to see how people will perceive the value in five years and ten years. Given the growth forecast, for instance, the data we had out of China yesterday mm. in terms of um, their uh, GDP, you can see that these growth, that growth is certainly there. And if the growth is there, then the growth in the sector must stay with us. So it's really all about future pricing and the ability for people to want to control and have asset to feed into the recovery. And ultimately, yes, the data points that we saw uh, from China certainly shows that China continues to buy, and especially in the trade of iron ore, how is quarterly pricing going to affect uh, in terms of level of demand? Mm. Chloe, I, I, I think that quarterly pricing is just a, a function of where the market and how the market is maturing. Because we've seen it in um, a lot of the other base metal markets, I feel that this is just a step in the right direction and quarterly pricing to me allows more liquidity which at the end of the day perhaps provides less volatility uh, in the prices. So I think that's just a market maturing because more people want the asset, want the, uh, the primary input. So much for your time and thoughts. So Jonathan Barrett there, do have a lovely weekend. Managing Director at Commodity Broking Services.